So uh, here we will discuss what is a single side band modulated signal and how it can be generated with the help of the Hilbert transform. So uh, we need to have a bandwidth efficient AM because uh, what we have seen until now is that double side band suppressed carrier AM signals, they have basically two side bands. Even the double side band suppressed carrier or the, uh, the full carrier signal, the full AM signal, they have two side bands. One is the upper side band and the other is the lower side band. So as you can see here, so we have the upper and lower side bands uh, of this spectrum. So each of these contains complete information of the baseband signal MT. So that means if uh, there is a baseband signal MT of bandwidth B hertz, the double side band signal that we uh, generate as a result of uh, AM modulation uh, occupies twice the radio frequency bandwidth to transmit. So this is not a very efficient technique of uh, utilizing the bandwidth. So uh, the uh, solution is to use single sideband modulation. So in this case, uh, it's, it's also generally known as SSB modulation. So uh, it either we transmit the lower sideband or, or the upper sideband. And so that means it uses only bandwidth B hertz, uh, which is equal to the bandwidth of the message signal. So the sideband can be suppressed from a double sideband modulated signal through bandpass filtering. So this is one technique, uh, but it's not very efficient because the suppression of the sideband will not be perfect uh, as it can be uh, understood. So, uh, so that means it requires only half of the bandwidth of the DSB signal. So now uh, just to visualize how the SSB signal looks like. So this is the uh, spectrum of the baseband signal. Uh, the message signal MT. So this is the spectrum of the double sideband uh, signal and, and since there is no carrier uh, over here, so this must be a double sideband suppressed carrier signal. So you can see the lower sideband and upper sidebands can be seen. Then the up, if we are trans, if we only look at the upper sideband, then uh, the grade regions represent the upper sideband. If we look at only the lower sideband, then these are the lower sidebands uh, which have lower frequency compared to the carrier. So they lie in the lower frequency region compared to the carrier. So this is, these are some examples of single sideband signals. Now uh, a signal, a single sideband sig uh, signal can be coherently demodulated as well. So let's say if we have a single sideband signal, we multiply it with a carrier of uh, we multiply it with the local oscillator having the same frequency as the carrier then the spectrum at the output of the local uh, the, the uh, output of the multiplier is shown here so we can see that uh, this is the signal the spectrum of the baseband signal so we can filter it out because the high frequency basebands are located at two twice the carrier frequency so that means uh, for single sideband modulation uh, or for single sideband demodulation actually, we will need the uh, same demodulator. If it's synchronous demodulator, then it's the same demodulator then ca that can be used for uh, SSB uh, and DSB, right? So uh, to understand how can we generate the SSB signals, it is important to understand the Hilbert transform. So if there is a signal XT, its Hilbert transform is denoted by X of HT or H of XT. So these are different notations that can be used. The expression for Hilbert transform is given by this equation. So where we have the integration of from minus infinity to infinity and we have we change the variable of uh, xt to x alpha and the integration is uh, the, uh, the variable of integration is alpha now if we look closely to this expression it looks like the convolution of xt with 1 over pi t so uh, this is the convolution of these two uh, terms now 
from the uh, duality of the Fourier transform, we can see that the Fourier transform of this expression is minus j signum f. Now uh, we'll see how this uh, is obtained as the Fourier transform. First, let's see what is a signum f. So in this uh, figure, we can see that signum of t is uh, shown here. So this is signum t. Uh, it's equal to this. This is a function. It's equal to one for t greater than zero. It's equal to minus one for t less than zero, and it's equal to zero for t is equal to zero. So this is the the solid line represents the plot of signum t. But since this does not uh, this does not uh, you know, follow or um, satisfy the Dirichlet conditions for the Fourier transform because of uh, this, because the integral of this term from minus infinity to infinity will give us an infinite value. So that's why we cannot directly find the Fourier transform of this expression. So instead of using a straight line like this, we use an exponentially decaying function. Uh, so to represent the signum of t. So in this, uh, in terms of this exponentially decaying signal, signum t can be represented by this expression where a approaches to zero. So uh, this becomes exactly equal to signum t, the solid line, when a is equal to zero, right? So uh, basically, if you look at signum t, it's the sum of uh, u of t and minus u of minus t. So the solid line represent the sum of u of t minus u of minus t. Now we can apply Fourier transform on this expression. So we get this as the Fourier transform. Um, so we have to apply Fourier transform on this and on this. So when we apply the transform, we will see the result is equal to one over j pi f. So that means Fourier transform of a signum of t is equal to this as we saw in the uh, previous uh, slide. So now uh, application of the time convolution property yields uh, this uh, result that uh, if you remember if we have a convolution in the time domain then it means we will have a multiplication in the frequency domain of the frequency components. So um, signum of f has been converted into frequency domain and instead of uh, xt uh, we now have xf and so this minus j is also uh, related to the signum of f. So uh, the expression that we saw on the previous slide where there was convolution between xt and 1 over pi t, uh, that uh, gives us this result that uh, in the frequency domain of that expression can be obtained through the convolution property. Now uh, after this expression, what uh, we understand is that if mt is passed through a transfer function hf which is equal to minus j signum f then the output is mht so uh, if we take the inverse transform of this expression or even if we look at this expression we can see that uh, the Fourier transform of the mht is xhf and it's equal to xf the Fourier transform of xt multiplied by minus j signum f, right? So if you want to take Hilbert transform of any signal mt, the transform would be mht and it would be as if we have passed this signal through a transfer function of value minus j signum f. So uh, if we write this transfer function from previous knowledge we see that it's equal to minus j for f greater than zero it's equal to j for f less than zero right so it follows that the magnitude of hf is one but its phase is minus pi by two when f is greater than zero and its phase is pi by two for f less than zero so what we are discussing until now is to understand what hilbert transform is so now to summarize the Hilbert transform, uh, if we change the phase of every component of mt by minus pi by 2 without changing its amplitude, that means the resulting signal will be mht. It would be the Hilbert transform of mt. So this is 
And this is how uh, we can apply a Hilbert transform to a signal that we change its phase by minus pi by t. So at the output, we will get the Hilbert transform of that signal because as we saw in the previous slide, the magnitude of the Hilbert transform is one, uh, on, but its phase is minus pi by two for frequencies for f greater than zero, which is the case for any signal mt, right? So this was the discussion about the Hilbert transform. So now we uh, discuss the time domain representation representation of the single sideband signal. So from that time domain representation, it would become easy to understand what single sideband signal is and how to we demodulate it. So uh, the building blocks of an SSP signal are the sideband. So we shall first obtain a time domain expression for each sideband. So if we look at this, MF, this is the Fourier transform of MT. It represents the spectrum of MT. So the one of the sidebands, upper sideband, let's denote it by M plus F is shown here. Uh, this M plus F can be obtained through this mathematical expression. So we multiply this MF with U of F. So that will give us the M plus F. Uh, in other words, if, if we look at the relation between u of f and signum f we will we will see that we can replace u of f with one plus signum f right and if we multiply this expression inside this is the expression we get for the upper sideband so if you look at this expression the upper sideband is equal to half of mf plus half of j MHF, where MHF is the Hilbert transform of MF. So since the in the representation of a single sideband, the Hilbert transform was required. That's why we first discussed how uh, what Hilbert transform is. Right. So then similarly, if we want to represent the lower sideband, it would be the same expression with a negative sign between these two terms. Right. So we can now express the SSP in terms of MT and MHT. So now let's say if this signal has been modulated. Uh, so let's say this is our sideband or this is the spectrum that we want to transmit. So what we have to do is we need to multiply it in time domain with cos omega CT. And at the output, the, the uh, signal that we obtain after this multiplication, the spectral plot of that signal will look like this. Right, so that means the upper sideband has been shown here. It's equal to now M plus F has been shifted to the carrier frequency. So that's why we can see these two uh, terms appearing in the Fourier transform of the modulated signal, right? So if we substitute the values of M plus F and M minus F, so which we can see here, so we substitute M minus F into this expression and m plus f as well and uh, you know replace the f with f minus fc so this is the expression we get for the upper sideband uh, modulated signal so we can see here the hilbert transform has been replaced with 1 over 2j here right so now uh, from the frequency shifting property, the inverse transform of this equation yields. So, uh, if you if you remember when we have when we multiply MT or any signal with a cos or a sinusoidal signal, a cosine or sinusoidal signal, that means in the frequency domain we will be shifting the frequency of uh, we will be shifting the spectrum of MT by the amount of FC or omega C. So this is uh, by using the frequency shifting property. Uh, so the previous expression can, which was in the frequency domain can be written like this in the time domain. So now this is the expression for the upper side band of signal uh, in terms of its Hilbert transform. So similarly, we can show the same expression for the lower sideband. So generally, a single sideband signal is represented by this expression where you can see we have now two terms, mt cos omega ct uh, plus minus, uh, depending upon if it's upper sideband or lower sideband, we will replace this plus minus uh, accordingly. And then we have mht sin omega ct, the Hilbert transform uh, multiplied by sin omega ct. The minus sign applies to upper sideband and the plus applies to the lower sideband. 
so finally um, we have the time domain expression now if let's say we want to demodulate it demodulate this signal we can do that through coherent demodulation where we can see the carrier is multiplied with the single sideband signal and we, we have this as the single sideband signal and this is the uh, carrier that we are multiplying it with uh, so cos omega uh, cos square omega ct will give us this expression uh, sine multiplied by cos will give us sine 2 omega ct uh, this is from the trigonometric uh, identity so in this term we will we will uh, see a separate uh, term for empty which can be now low pass filtered so that the higher frequency terms can be removed so the demodulator is um, identical to the synchronous demodulator that was used for double sideband suppressed carrier signal so that means any of the synchronous DSB SC demodulators discussed earlier can be used to demodulate uh, SSB SC signal. So uh, in summary, we have seen that uh, DSB double sideband signal occupies more bandwidth. So we can uh, we have a solution for that. We can transmit a single sideband because all the information exists in the single sideband. Uh, we can transmit it by uh, using the uh, by generating a Hilbert transform and adding it to the uh, modulated MT cos omega CT as we have seen in the expressions and then we can receive it by using any synchronous demodulator that we have uh, you know uh, discussed previously so if you have any questions you can ask in the comments section and please don't forget to subscribe to the channel thank you